Timothy Miller here with Dodds Cash and Mr. David Gates, uh, owner of the site, yeah, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, and also, lead developer on the Gates, also? Correct, yeah. Project lead. Mostly, uh, do like uh, environment design, level design, I do some modeling, a little bit of animation. Awesome. Drew actually had an interview with him yesterday when we were posting, but I wanted to show off some of this beautiful content, don't show off some of the game. So, um, I guess where did the inspiration come for all this art? So, a lot of the art, especially in the characters, came from things like Waterworld and Mad Max. It's uh, a lot of that, you know, real dirty kind of look that, you know, not over the top, but, you know, you, just, you know, I like the shoulder pads. You look at Mad Max and they always have, like, football pads, like, you spike on them and stuff. I mean, it's just like, you gotta have it, you know. It's a hard. We cleaned it up a little bit, gave it that more traditional steampunk look, but, uh, yeah. But still, it still stands out definitely from what you expect from a steampunk game. Uh, there's not, like, this, even with all the gears, it still looks almost plain, for lack of a better term. Like, it looks very... It makes more for six. Exactly. Then just, uh, here's a thousand gears on the front that don't do anything. Right. And actually, one of the really cool features on that mech that a lot of people have uh, complimented us on is underneath this chest plate, which is, uh, by the way, will be destructible so that can come off when, after damage. But his chest plate has a huge gear in the middle that uh, actually works with his gear on his uh, waist. So everything moves like it's supposed to when he turns. So. And that's awesome. It's, uh, little details like that are always great. Gamers love to see them. Uh, so whenever you get the mech, or commander is actually what it is, you go into an RTS view, but you can still move him and you can still use him, correct? Right. So it's something that we're creating called a first-person real-time strategy view. So you're not the normal god view where you're just like completely out of the you know outer space looking down from a satellite. You actually still have like your first-person viewport there. It's got a little portal, and then your first or your RTS map is in front of that. So you're like more immersed into the game because it's not on your screen. It's it's in your cockpit. So. Yeah, it's not just you're not just a viewer from the outside. You're actually involved. That's, exactly. That's really cool. Um, one of the coolest things I saw, which actually that revolver looks badass. Yeah, that's my favorite from us right there. Yeah, that is a badass revolver. A lot of people recognize the uh, Mauser ha handle from uh, Star Wars there. I didn't actually realize that, but that looks awesome. And that is the shotgun, one of the two shotguns talked about with Drew yesterday, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. So the shotgun is uh, one of the primary weapons that we use for our upgrade system. You can see there's actually two different versions of it there. The third version of it actually gets rid of the pump where it's fully automatic. So you can kind of see our upgrade system and work there. I like the uh, revolver style uh, sniper rifle. Exactly. It was yeah. always fun. The cool thing with that is you have a pretty high rate of fire because it's just like the old rifle man, you know? Yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, what do you think is your favorite weapon to work on? Like looking at this concept art and everything like that. Uh, my two favorite weapons are going to be the, this one right here, actually, the Boilermaker. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Some people ask me if it'll boil potatoes, but, you know, it, uh, it definitely boils people. But, so you have your fuel tank in the back, your water tank in the front, super heat tank that shoots out your steam. Nozzle will give you two different spray modes, so you can have a long range or a short range with a fog, so it gives you a large uh, area of effect. So. Well, it's pretty awesome. It's like a badass flamethrower. Exactly. Yeah. Steam pump version of flamethrower. So uh, what's your other favorite one? Other one is going to be our uh, pistol. It's got a really cool design. It's got the uh, macaroni shaped clip that feeds through it, so really high rate of fire. Low damage, but you can get enough shots off to make it count. I think we actually called that in the video. I think that was uh, one of the earlier ones, other ones that you yeah, got through. Exactly. Awesome. So while we're doing this, we're going to jump over to Drew. Absolutely. And we're going to watch Drew play a little bit. And uh, if you want, we can jump off his headphones and talk to you a little bit about the game. Absolutely. Ready? So, um, trying to figure out the best way to do this. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. You might hold the yeah, uh, stupid little mic for a little bit. True. Take off your headphones and talk to David about the game you're playing. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun. I uh, have been doing this a lot. Hold on. I can't 
can't get anybody. I uh, have been running around with a sniper a lot. It seems really fun just to take people out with it. It's it's pretty like I found it kind of simple just to like run and gun with it almost because you like it's really pinpoint accurate. But sometimes you can just land shots and it's hysterical to watch people just fall and die. Um, as far as I love the map though. I it's just whoops. Whoa. 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 There you oh, go. Oh, hey, okay. <laughs> gotcha. That's awesome. So, the sing- what's the single, like, what's the difference? So, the difference is it's still buggy. So oh, okay. I didn't <laughs> the know accuracy, if there was a... uh, Yeah, it's, that's a little bug in it right now. The accuracy just needs to be improved on it, but, uh, yeah, it's something I figured out while playing it for a few hours. I mean, hey, little t- tips and tricks. And actually, if you look up and zoom in on those mechs up top, yeah. those are our commanders, so you can see that's the one for the uh, the Iron Mason, and then that's the one for the Northland Pirates. Okay. They, uh, the way that they're designed are uh, it, it reflects the the two factions pretty accurately. It's, you know, one looks a lot more clean, a lot more refined, a lot higher technology. The other ones more yeah, kind of know, put together with scraps. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna get up here see if I can get a good view of them. Um, why exactly are the two factions kind of just waging war against each other? So one thing we wanted to make sure we did was, and that's that you can actually see the gears I was talking about, how they yeah. move accurately with the movement under his chest plate there. Yeah. But uh, so these two guys, there's no good versus evil. It's really just the difference between you know, two different groups waging over the, the last remaining resources. That's why they're up here attacking this cargo ship, trying to get, you know, the supplies on it. Okay. And then they use those to uh, upgrade their team to, to, to finally win. All right. And so do you, uh, so do you gain uh, supplies by um, capturing spot, like the points? Right. So, like, you're on a control point right there. It looks like the blue team currently owns all of them. Yeah. Right now, without the uh, RTS mode fully implemented, you're not really getting much use out of controlling them, but what will happen is those commanders will be able to use those to upgrade your team. So. Gotcha. Ah. There we go. Yeah. Um, what? Who do what? We have. Okay, cool. I'm going to continue poning nubs. Thanks, Tim. Um. So, uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, exactly, I see a lot of the weapons are just stated as weapon, and you had said beforehand that, you know, you're you're just throwing, like, all the weapons that we're able to use, you know, out in one thing. What is this thing? I know what it does. So, that one is the Boilermaker. That's, uh, it's a steam gun. It's basically our version of a, uh, flamethrower. But super heats water into steam, and then fries your opponents. Awesome. Okay, then, because I've, uh, been kind of running through the box with it. It's kind of fun just to yeah. annihilate them with it. Uh, oh, hold up. Gotcha. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, this thing. Let's talk about so that one. It looks kind of weird without our hand models in there, but that's the steamy stabber. Okay. The it's, thing is. it's got a button on the back that gets pressed, and then that chamber on the top of it shoots steam into the person you stab. Awesome. Okay, that's. I was guessing that was it. Let me see if I can get the other, the knife, the big machete thing. Yeah, you got to kill someone to run over it to pick it up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Really sorry to uh, You ready to go? Yeah. Okay, let's go. I played a little bit. Yeah. It's seven kills. Nice. I did really well, so I was just like, and now I'll take a break.